Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Cersei. I'm so excited to paint with you again today in our journals. We're doing another watercolor journal page and today we're going to do some fun little illustrative flower pots, um, plants and flower pots. I thought this would be fun and easy, um, kind of like swatching and doodling. I might bring in a micron pen later or I might just do this all in watercolor. But I have my Baohong journal here. I am looking at some other journals because I know this one is actually quite difficult to get. It's been out of stock a lot and some folks have been really asking what would alternatives be. So I did order some new ones, which I am gonna give a try. So I have two others here. Um, that I will go over in another video um, after I test them out. So uh, this one's a Tumorta. This one is, I think it's a, oh, I can never remember how to say the name. The Hannah, yeah, I won't even try until I look at it. But we are going to give these a look um, once I test them out in another video shortly. So these might be some recommendations for other watercolor journals you could use in place of this. These were smaller, I just ordered smaller ones because I wasn't sure if I was gonna love them. But um, yeah, we'll give them a try. So let's do some flowers. I have my Bahong journal, I have my core watercolor palette here. We got some old colors from our last video from the poppy. Uh, let's just war or water these down. And then I have a size 10 velvet touch brush. And then I also have a new size four velvet touch brush. So I'm probably going to use these two for some small little delicate flowers and leaves. So let's get started. So what I want to do is just make some fun, play with some colors and shapes of pots. I'm not going to draw anything, um, but this can be a great time to kind of experiment with color palettes. I think I say that with every video, but I do love experimenting with color palettes. You could have some bleed proof white on hand as well as um, a micron pen or another gel pen um, to add some details later. But let's just get started with some shapes. So I'm just gonna kinda go across um, making different pot shapes. So this one's gonna be like rounded, a straight top, rounded bottom. There we go. Let's throw in a little more color and I'll let that one dry. So I can, I'm going to put all my pots out first. So this is kind of like swatching that I did before, but they're going to have a little more intentional shape. Uh, let's do a yellow. This one I can make a little more square. I do magenta, but I'm gonna add a little green to it. I think I want it to be a little toned down, more of a red. Let's go back into this blue. I'm gonna put some green in it. So now I have a greenish color. I'm gonna do something that's a little more like a neck for a vase. Maybe a little rounded at the bottom. There we go. Add a little dollop of blue in there. And let's see, let's do a nice green, green. Uh, here, this one we'll do like a long. 
You don't have to vary the shapes so much. You could just do like the same one over and over again. Let's do one in between. I'm gonna do another yellow. Just a little square. These definitely don't have to be perfect. All right, so now that these are drying, I'm gonna give them a little bit more detail. I'm gonna just go back through with a darker color. Throw some stripes on. can do basically in the same colors just another layer to make it darker slightly darker just to give them a little personality these are still wet down here and again I can go back in with some bleed proof white to do some white details go. This one bled out a little too much. I'll go back in a little while and finish that one up. So we have some little pots. We can always add more details on later. I'm going to get out my little number four brush and I'm going to start to add some flowers and some greenery. So I'm going to start with this one right here and I'm just going to put in some petaled flowers. So leaving white space in the middle. I'll put a center in later, but just and then we'll do some on their side, like this. Another one on its side. So you're only seeing the side of the petals, maybe another one here that kind of is forward facing. All right. Let's add some greens. So stems. And then we can also add some leaves. Doing these in long leaves. And then we can give these centers. Let's do a yellow center on these. There we go. We'll let that dry. I'm going to take a little black, just a few dots. There we go. All right, let's do some other shapes of flowers. Let's do this other yellow one. I'm going to do reds. I'm going to do something tulip reminiscent, so some tulip shapes, which is just basically kind of like an egg shaped. And we'll have them kind of splay all out like a rough egg shape. You don't want them to be too perfect. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now that we have all of those in, let's get in. I'm going to use sap green and phthalo blue to make like a much cooler green, blue green color, darker, a little more saturated. 
for these. And then tulip leaves are really big and long. We'll have them just spray out of our little so that something like this can really help you work on brush control and uh, painting in smaller spaces to really start to get the use of understanding the tip versus the belly of the brush. Um, even though it's very simple, I'm just gonna add a few more leaves to this in this darker green color. There we go. All right, let's do, in this one, we're gonna do like a little row of maybe pansies so some purples or what are those other one impatience they're like these little petaled flowers there's not a lot to them we'll do purples and pinks so i'm just making like little blobs basically okay and let's throw some pinks in between and then we're gonna throw a lot of greenery in here. And I'm gonna put down a layer of like this yellow green first to give it some highlights. And then some darker green. Basically, I'm just tapping in different green colors, spilling out the sides just a little bit. There we go. And I keep kicking. Uh, I have to set up this a little differently next time because I keep kicking the rug, which is attached to the leg of the arm. I'm so sorry. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, we could do something blue, maybe over here. Or, oh, let's do like some yellow, like flowers, almost like Black Eyed Susans. I'm doing the petals first. Usually I do the centers first on something like this. Just kind of imagining where the center will go. Little paints gray. And some stems. And you don't have to overthink these. They can just be messy and fun. This one got very messy. I should have waited for a few things to dry first, but you know, we're just playing. We're just playing and doodling, paint doodling. Let's do just some greenery in one of these. So let's get, um, I'm gonna use green gold, which is this very yellow green vibrant looking and I'm gonna do kind of these long leaves like that and then we'll throw something else in here okay 
but leave it just like that. But I'm going to take a darker green. Do almost like some eucalyptus. Kind of feel lots of contrast. There we go. That one's fun. And what are we going to do for our last little one up here? Hmm. I kind of want to do something white, but that's always tricky. Let's do, you know what I am? I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt some daisies. We're going to put in some yellow centers here. Okay, just a few yellow centers. And I'm going to use some very light Payne's gray. So you can see here. Well, no, you can't see here, but down here it's very light. And I am going to paint my petals, but leaving some white spots. And then I'm going to play into the centers here, boop, 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 around the yellow. There we go. And again, we're going to put in some stems. And some little baby leaves. Never paint this small. It's kind of fun. All right. You can go in with some bleed proof white if you want to add some details on your little pots. This blue one, we're going to put in some white embellishments. I'm going to put on some stripes. On there. What else? This one will do stripes this way. And this will do like little water this down a little bit. There we go. A little pattern of rectangles and instead of just white you can also add darker green paint so or darker paint of any color so let's put in let's put in just some dashes There, cute. And then for this one, let's just give it a different color on the rim and around here. Oh, we'll just make it striped. Love me some good stripes. there we have it our cute little flower pots they were super easy i didn't get stressed about it i just made approximations of flower shapes um, with different colors trying not to overthink things really working on my brush control with this little guy i could have used some more patience by letting a few things dry before i moved on to the next step but that's how we learn um, by making mistakes and uh, learning for the next time that we do something that we should approach it differently. 
um, and learning is part of the process. So you're going to have really good days and you're going to have days that are frustrating, but that is all part of the process. That is how we learn and grow. So just remember that whenever you have one of those tough or challenging days, use it to the best of your ability to learn something from it and move on um, to the next day or the next painting. Take what you've learned um, and that's when you start to master things. So thank you so much for painting with me today. We'll be back soon for a new watercolor journal uh, page and don't forget to check the description for supplies and materials that I use daily as well as uh, follow me on Instagram and I will see you soon. Take care y'all. Happy painting.